Hey everyone, it's Mackenzie, and in this video we're going to be talking a little bit about the importance of getting an early diagnosis and getting an accurate diagnosis. So again, I have with me Betsy Mencher, and we're going to be sharing our experiences, me personally, with my diagnosis process, and Betsy's going to share a little bit about her husband's process and what that looked like. So Betsy, if you wouldn't mind, you know, kind of walking us through your husband's diagnosis process. Yeah, um, unfortunately it was a long and complicated process and um, he, the situation was unique in several ways, but what is specific to amyloidosis is that he presented to his internist with some vague symptoms. He wasn't feeling well and um, they did some routine blood work and he, the blood work came back and his cholesterol was unusually high. Um, like in the 400s or something like that. Yeah. And so some uh, something you don't see very, very often with a healthy person. And um, so this kind of set the path for the doctor of what he was gonna kind of look into. And so he thought about um, diseases that cause high cholesterol, fatty liver, lifestyle things that might cause it the way he ate. Um, and he put him on a statin, which is sort of the thing you would do right away, and told him to change some of his dietary things. And unfortunately, my husband started to feel worse, and um, the statin didn't help at all. And um, they did an MRI as well to see if there was anything going on that might be contributing, and they identified an enlarged liver and an enlarged spleen. And um, so they, again, were just going down this path and kind of persisted in that way. And, um, and they, um, even though the statin wasn't working and even though he wasn't feeling any better from it, they decided to do a liver biopsy to see what was causing this enlargement in his liver. And um, ultimately, um, that revealed um, the diagnosis of amyloidosis, but also set off. Um, uh, my husband um, bled out from the liver biopsy because there, um, I think you don't clot as well when there's amyloidosis in the liver, and um, and this caused him to end up in the ICU, and um, and he ended up very very sick from um, this diagnostic process. But it did ultimately um, reveal the diagnosis of both myeloma and amyloidosis. Yeah, and how long would you say that that diagnosis took to get? Um, from start to finish, months. Um, he presented not feeling well um, in maybe the springtime, and ultimately my husband didn't get diagnosed until October, November, um, and then because of all that he went through, he wasn't able to be treated yeah. until much later on because he had to get better from this whole illness that he yeah. incurred from having had the biopsy, and um, so it was long. Yeah. Um, it was a long process, yeah. um, and um, and ultimately it was a, he had a bone marrow biopsy. Mm -hmm. Um, which confirmed it for sure, yeah. um, but um, the liver biopsy um, seemed to sort of show some indication. Yeah. Um, and how about for you? What was what was the process like for you? Uh, the process was fairly smooth. I really I can't complain too much. I I noticed a lump in the back of my throat, um, and I decided to see an ENT about it. And the first EMT I saw, we weren't really on the same page, and I, I just had this gut feeling that it was something greater, and she wasn't terribly concerned. So I ultimately sought out a second opinion, and he biopsied it right away, and it came back with characteristics of amyloid. So at that point, he recommended that I see someone who specialized in amyloidosis. He was skeptical at first he didn't really think that you know this was a, a strong lead but it, it's worth digging into mm -hmm. so you say smooth yeah <laughs> you said it was smooth but smooth is a relative term i mean you had to get a second opinion and, yeah um, and
and she wasn't, you know, she no. didn't think it was anything the first person. Yeah. So ultimately, I saw the hematologist that he recommended. He did the blood work. He immediately did the bone marrow biopsy, and that, in fact, confirmed the diagnosis mm -hmm. of amyloidosis. So at that point, it was a fairly quick, you know, process. By the time I saw the second ENT and had it biopsied, it was only a matter of two or three months before I had that diagnosis, and we were able to look forward to treatment. So I think that was something that was very, very helpful in, in my case, particularly. Mm -hmm. So you, know, you had a very long road, a very you know, winding road, so to speak. There were a number of different things that came up. So you know, speak to the fact of, of getting it right early. Yeah, I mean, I, if our doctor had known more about this disease, I mean, I'm sure he had heard of it, but yeah. I don't think it was really on his radar yeah. or he was very familiar with it. And um, I think that had he been able to think a little bit more outside of the box, I mean, yeah. my husband was not an unhealthy person. There was no reason for him to have such high cholesterol or an enlarged liver and spleen. He wasn't responding to the statins. This was not somebody who was presenting really like somebody who had fatty liver. Yeah. And, and it's also my understanding that you shouldn't do a biopsy, a liver biopsy on somebody yeah. who has amyloid um, in their liver. So that's concerning that a liver specialist would go ahead with that. So it seems that, you know, having more knowledge about this disease, yeah. um, regardless of what your specialty is, and also if you're a generalist, is really, really important. And would have gotten us to a place where he would have been diagnosed sooner as well as without all of this heartache yeah. and um, you know him being so physically compromised. Yeah, I, no, I think you make a great point in the fact that you know it's really about physicians being able to really step outside what they know about the disease and think think outside the box, like you said. You know, not everyone is a textbook case. Right? If we read about everything in the textbook, life would be a lot easier. But really being able to identify their skepticism and act on that, I think, is extremely beneficial and, and really allows the patient better outcomes, right? The better, the more accurate you're, you're diagnosed, the earlier you can seek treatment, the healthier you are, the more aggressive treatment you can have, and ultimately, the better outcome you can have. So really, really really acting on on those gut feelings, I think, is something right. that is really important. And especially with a disease like this that is, you know, my husband was in his 40s, you're in his 20s, I think people think of this as an older person's disease. Yeah. And so, you know, a physician thinking that this is a disease that can anybody can have, Absolutely. not just somebody, an elderly person that comes into their office. Yeah. Um, I think especially now, you know, um, it's probably something that people have been, you know, dying from for years and years and years yeah. because they didn't know about it yeah. um, in younger people. And so yeah. um, if they're thinking about it and they're treating it early, um, great. Yeah, absolutely. I think you make a great point. So, so thank you so much for joining us today. We enjoyed having you. And if you enjoyed our video, please do share it. And if you're interested in learning more, you can always check out our Facebook and our YouTube page where we have other videos on the topic. And as always, we'll see you in the next video.